And now something completely different. Good afternoon. I'm speaking to you live just outside. I like to think balding is just God's way of saying, now let's see you get laid. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? What I'd really like to do is put the greatness of this man in perspective. The halo of community has a lot to be thankful for, having you as a spokesperson. You mean you just call this guy up? About life and about reality. And now, America's number one reality radio show for men. Live from Los Angeles, it's Spencer Cobrin's The Bald Truth. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Phone number is 888-659-3727. So great to be here. We are live here. Uh, I think that's, when, when's the last time I did a live show? Probably about two or three weeks ago. Great to be back. Again, phone number, 888 um, Again, for those of you who um, are kind of figuring out why I am not live every week, you know, I, I've been uh, traveling back and forth to the East Coast. Um, my dad is, is not doing great, and, um, you know, he's an old guy, and I'm trying to spend as much time uh, with family as possible. So what I have been doing is recording some broadcasts, which will be up and you know out soon. We're putting out a couple of segments here and there, but I have been spending some time recording some broadcasts. So when I am away, uh, I hope to have some new shows for you guys and some you know really interesting guests and interviews and stuff like that. But tonight we are live, so feel free to call in. I do think the phone lines are working properly tonight. We tested them before the broadcast. Uh, we put a few hours into the system this week, and I think everything, fingers crossed, everything is working pretty well. But you never know. I mean, time work can screw up again, but the system itself should be working just fine. Phone number is 888 now, for those of you who don't know who I am, just stumbled upon this show, who may be watching on uh, Ustream.tv or um, on, uh, on uh, Vaughn Live or on Justin TV or, you know, stumbling upon it through uh, GFQ, Live.tv, the GFQ network, or listening on iTunes or wherever. I'm a consumer advocate for men and women dealing with hair loss. I am the author of a very well-known book called uh, The Bald Truth and another book that uh, was written specifically for women called The Truth About Women's Hair Loss. I'm also the founder of the American Hair Loss Association and a guy who has been dealing with hair loss for many, many years. I'm a hair loss sufferer. I'm a guy who started to lose his hair at the tender age of 21 and have been lucky enough to save a lot of hair with the use of FDA-approved medication and make the right moves along the way, even though I made some wrong moves, but nothing devastating, uh, to kind of, um, you know, keep a semblance of a full-looking head of hair. Now, at the age of 48, um, you know, I've done pretty well, but if you're just tuning in and watching me for the first time, this is a partial sham. It's important that you know that. I do not have a completely full head of hair. It is a partial uh, comb over with a little makeup in the back and a lot of hairspray and voila. I look like a guy who has a relatively decent, you know, quasi comb over head of hair. And I am fucking happy with it. Let me tell you that. I am ecstatic that I have been in a position to make the right moves, to do well on FDA-approved medication, to not have to go down the surgical route because I, I, at this stage in my life, I really don't think that I need it. I feel extremely fortunate. But for those of you who might not be as fortunate, for those of you who may have made the wrong moves, for those of you who did not get on Finasteride early or who were afraid to get on Finasteride, there is still life after hair loss. It is possible to get a great hair transplant if you're the right candidate. It is possible to wear an undetectable hair system, which most guys don't want to do, but it's still the most purchased treatment for hair loss in the world. So while everyone says they don't want to wear hair, there are millions of people who do, and they're wearing it undetectably. 
but that's a real pain in the ass. You got to know how to deal with it. But there is hope, and there's also hope. You know, there's also you know the idea of just moving on, saying fuck it. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want this to be a part of my life. I'm going to take control of it by just shaving my head or cutting my hair short and letting nature take its course. And I have to tell you guys, that is the best way to go. If you are equipped to deal with that, which I was not, that is the best way to go. Because once you come to terms with it, you are then able to live your life. I wasn't. I was not able to do that. That's why I do what I do. I deal with the psychology of those who are like me, who are not equipped, especially at a young age, to deal with male pattern baldness, who don't want to live their lives with, you know, without hair, who don't feel comfortable in their own skin, who don't think they look as attractive or feel that they are getting the same response in life from people, from the opposite sex, from, you know, uh, potential employers, whatever it is. I was you. And in, in essence, I still am. I mean, I have definitely come a long way. And I know that, you know, if medication fails me eventually, if I, you know, start to progress more rapidly or, you know, everything just starts to go to hell in a handbasket, I know that I'm going to want to be a guy that at least looks like he has hair on his head. I've come to terms with that. And I come to terms with the idea of doing whatever it takes within reason and safely to make myself appear like a guy who has hair and whether that eventually is a hair transplant or another medication that comes down the pike or another treatment or surgical hair restoration all right guys well anyway give us a call here at the ball truth triple eight six five nine three seven two seven you know the spiel um i'm using a, a different setting for the microphone so the sound may be really wacky but we will give it a shot again it's coming through skype there might be a short in one of my wires um, I've been having a lot of problems with this, but let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Good evening, Spencer. I think you have to fire your engineer. By the way, your your sound is coming in perfectly at this point. All right, so you're, you're having no problem on the phone with me? No problem on the phone. I hear you very well on the uh, audio, which right. I have obviously have now turned down. Okay, good. Now, can I begin? You can begin, yes. As you know, on the Guy from Queens show on Friday, starring Andrew Zeri and yourself and Coco Butter, I made a very startling prediction. Do you recall what that was? Uh, yeah, I don't think it was that startling, but it was a very accurate prediction. Well, a lot of people, you know, were surprised with that. I predicted that George Zimmerman would be found guilty of no, all charges. There would be mass demonstrations in the streets. And now the government will probably be prosecuting him under civil rights violations. I'm going to play your opening. These are all accurate. I'm going to play your opening. I'm sorry. I'm going to play your opening, then we're going to talk about that. Okay. My name is. My name is. My name is. Joe from Staten Island. My name is. Excuse me. My name is. Would you like me to reiterate it? My name is. My name is. My name is. Have you heard it? Excuse me. My name is. My name is. My name is. Joe from Staten Island. Yeah, hey, Joe. Well, let me finish my opening. You, your engineer cut me off before I got to the point of my opening. <laughs> Screw you. Go ahead. <laughs> well, as you know, I made that accurate prediction. But I've also predicted that the effective treatment for head loss will be out by 2015. I really hope to God that I am right with that prediction because the suffering must end. We're in a constant merry-go-round. and I, I just want to get off the, the, what do you call that thing with the horses, the carousel ride, because I just a, can't take much more of it. That's what it is. Jim. Before I get to the news, I just want to make that brief comment. Well, let's talk, let's talk about the news, and I have some interesting news for you as well. Oh, want to get to my news? Or yeah. want to get to your news first? Your news first. Oh, well, nothing really breaking, but let me get to these three things. First of all, there's been an investigation conducted 
Adirond is definitely not going out of business. This is all a lie. They've been selling out. They've been selling some old lab equipment, probably to buy new stuff for their phase three trial. I don't have any specifics on now, it. Now, where, but I know for where, a fact. Where, where did you get this information from? Where did I get this information? I got this information um, off the uh, various forums. I I, um, I went on Adirond's website. They're still on target for for. Um, a release of their pro their pro product, Jay Gami, in the first half of 2014. Well, I have some interesting news for you, Joe, and for is it good or bad? For, for, me. I don't need any more bad news. For, for, all, for all of our listeners, well, let, let's put it this way. Here's the good news. The good news is that Adirans has definitely been able to grow hair in more of its study participants than not, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, I had, what is the percentages, please? I, I had a, uh, they're significant. That's all I can tell you. I had a very long conversation with Dr. Ken Washenik, um last week. And Ken wanted to let everybody know and to let me know. Uh, at some point, we hope to have him on the program. He doesn't want to come on right now. But uh, there is some truth to the rumors that are out there. At this stage, um, Adirans has decided to uh, no longer fund the ARI project. Now, before you guys jump off a cliff, I want you to understand that... Um, I'm getting ready, Spencer. No, they, they, the company is still holding itself together, and they are planning, and they are currently actively um, working on other sources of funding. Uh, at, at some point, I'll be able to talk to you guys more, in more detail about it, and perhaps you guys can all be involved. But Ken Washenik assures me that everyone, you know, the principals of the company, everyone who's involved with the company, uh, still believes in what they're doing and knows that they can make this happen. Uh, and all they need is relatively little funding. But, you know, you have to understand that, you know, this is a public company. There was a new board of directors that just basically, uh, you know, came on board, and they made a decision based on a specific business model. Uh, and their business model has been, at least the, in in the broad sense, you know, the Adirond's business model. Basically, what they do is, they sell wigs, in Asia and in Europe. They have, you know, salons, um, kind of like the hair club. And they also do surgical hair restoration, obviously the parent company of Bosley, and now the hair club here in the U.S. Uh, the fact that they were able to spend $162 million, and I hope that you guys still have my sound, um, $162 million on hair club means that obviously Adirondacks is in good shape. Uh, however, you know, after 10 years um, and after a turnover, two turnovers in their board of directors, um, the board who, it's not a board of scientists, they're a board of businessmen, decided that at this stage they are dropping funding for the project. But if Adirons is growing ahead, they're, they're giving away the, I mean, the medical finance of, of, of the century worth billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. This doesn't make any sense to me, Spencer. Well, it doesn't make Maybe any sense. Maybe you could elaborate on this. Uh, I could elaborate. You know, this, this is what makes sense to me. Um, they're not seeing any return on their investment at this point. They have decided to do to basically take a, a different, um, you know, strategy for you know the next how many how, however many years uh, they decide to work on their on their on their business strategy, and they are unable to work into this model providing any more funding for for this particular project. Again, but with that said, the principles of the company. Guys like Ken Washenik and, and uh, the, the scientists involved uh, are actively working on some stuff. Um, I am convinced that they will get the funding they need. It's not really a tremendous amount of money in the scheme of things. And, you know, in the end, it may end up um, fast-tracking, in my view, this technology, if it's done correctly. Uh, well, how can a lack of less funding uh, fast-track... Um technology, if I may ask you. 
just well, need to elaborate on that for the audience. I, I can do my best, but I mean, if they actually would be able to get more funding, if they go outside of the uh, Adirond's umbrella and be able to make certain moves that they wouldn't be able to make while working with this public company, um, it's a possibility that could faster. It, it can move a little faster. Now, again, that's maybe that's hopeful, wishful thinking, but. Um, you know, Ken could have just said to me, hey, Spence, it's over. Goodbye. Tell everybody that, you know, we did our best and we are moving on. There's no more money. They are actively working on, you know, getting some funding. And frankly, I can tell you that there's a tremendous amount of interest out there. So, Well, obviously, there's been hundreds of billions of dollars at stake. Right. Now, I think you pose a good question. Why would Adirans want to let something like this go? You know, I mean, maybe the board just doesn't understand it, or maybe they just think that, okay, what well, the results that they have so far, they, they don't see how it's going to be a, um, uh, I mean, they see obviously see how it's going to be marketable, but they don't necessarily see it coming to fruition in the next few years, and they don't want to make that investment. They want to invest in other projects. And you know what? Again, this is a new board. Um, they're not really dialed in to what... ARI has been doing all these years. They came in to kind of revamp the company, uh, from what I gather. And part of revamping the company and moving in a different direction is they want to see profits right away. And they want to be able to show their shareholders profits right away. So there was a uh, strategic decision that they made. It's unfortunate, but who knows, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But the rumors are true. Um, Adirondack is no longer funding the project. And Let's just hope that uh, it still moves forward. Well, Spencer, I, I'm very happy to hear this. I, I take this as another blow to hell or sufferers, in my expert opinion. I mean, it doesn't sound that encouraging. What am I going to tell you? You know, I'm just. I think I'm, I'll have to increase my medication I, on a daily basis. I am. I, I, really I am just the messenger, my man. I know. I know, for Spencer. I know that this is devastating news. Uh, I mean. I just don't know what to say. Well, if you, if you, if you, if you get the ripple sound now, I'm hearing some positive news on this. Maybe you could elaborate on this. Uh, that they're, re they're receiving uh, hundreds of million dollars from a Japanese uh, cosmetic company called Sh Sushido. Are you, uh, are you aware of it, that? I don't think it's dollars. I think it's yen. It's what? I don't think it's hundreds of millions of dollars. It's yen. Yen, whatever, whatever. It's a significant amount of money. Well, I mean, you have to understand. There, there's a lot. Of, uh, it takes a lot of yen to make a dollar. So, um, there's a big difference between you know a few million dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars, Joe. All right. Say so, yeah, we'll say whatever. And they're also doing work at um, a university of Berlin, conducting their studies. Right. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I get. I don't know, Spence. I'm just, uh, it's, I'm just, I don't know. Maybe you better go to your next call. I'm just a little, a little depressed right now. Joe, the, Joe, uh, Joe. I could, I could have held back. You know, I, I, I asked, I asked Ken. I said, you know, what? How do you want to present this to the public? He came to me because he knows that everyone wants to hear this information from me. And I said, listen, Ken, come on the program. Let's talk about it. And you know, for very obvious reasons, uh, it, it's not the right time. But in time, I'm, I'm sure that we can get a representative to come on, whether it's Ken or somebody else, to talk about what their next move is. But he did tell me to let my listeners and my readers know that they do plan on continuing this research and moving forward. And they are actively looking for private funding. And um, I think it's going to happen. It, it really just depends on you know, making, get, you know, getting the right pieces of the puzzle to make this deal. That's all it takes. So just, you know, listen, they, they've come this far. We know that they're on to something. Um, I do, it's hard for me to comprehend why Adirans decided to pull out if, in fact, the technology is working. But Ken assured me that it is. And it was really just a, uh, you know, a move made by the new board. And maybe there's a lot of pressure from the, sh from the stockholders. I'm not sure. But whatever it is, well, who's it? I'm sorry. That is the decision that was made, and uh, as of this time, um, you know, basically it's a it's a, it's an incredible technology that's kind of set aside in a box until 
more funding can come to fruition. I, I think it's going to happen. Well, you said, you said they're working on it now. Who's, paying, who's giving the money now? I mean, do they have a reserve of money? I mean, do you know anything about that? Well, I'll tell you what. I will, uh, you know, I'll ask Ken some more questions and see what he can provide me with. But at this point, Joe, I'm just telling you what he told me. You know, don't well, shoot, Spencer, don't shoot, me favor, don't next... shoot the messenger, dude. No, I'm not mad at you, Spencer. So could you do me a favor next time and email me prior to this show so I could premedicate myself? I, I cannot. I could not put this in writing, Joe. I don't care how close you are to the program and to me. This is something that, you know, I gave my word that I would make an announcement on the program, but I wasn't going to spread this through email or get it out there through our moderators on the message forum. You know, when someone comes to me with information, you know, all of my conversations are always in confidence. And the reason why people in the industry trust me is because I will not, I will never betray their confidence. I will, you know, put things out there when, you know, basically, you know, people come to me and they're like, look, we don't want to get this out right away. Give it a couple of days. Do it on next Tuesday's show. I keep my word. And that's it. Well, I bet you, I bet you didn't even tell your wife. I didn't tell anybody. You know what? She doesn't even give a shit at this point. I, she doesn't want to hear about this business. She really doesn't. Well, I've dry, I, I've I, driven her nuts for so many years that we try not to talk about this stuff. I don't know. I just feel like it's a, it's a, another nail in the coffin. I mean, I, I guess I have to make this prediction now that hell or sufferers will have an, another very unmerry Christmas. I think we all agree on that one. You know, I, I disagree. You know, Joe, you have been calling this program for 14 years. Um, I well, have, more, well, we have 50, uh, 50 that anniversary actually coming up in September. Right. I, Jesus, I can't believe I'm still doing this shit. I should. I might as well just hang myself. I love to take you to Ted to celebrate that, but go ahead with your saying. I'm All right. Sorry. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I have seen so many people get, get, over the last 15 years get past their hair loss, figure out a way to live with their hair loss, get great hair transplants, do well on Finasteride, you know, uh, you know, get to the point. I remember, I remember young guys who have written me who were like at the time when I started who were 20 years old who are now married with children who write me to thank me for the advice that, you know, they've gotten from the show. And, you know, you're one of the guys that have just ha have not been able to come to terms with the reality of what we have for hair loss right now, and I get that, but you have been waiting so much. You have been waiting for fifteen since I've known you. You've been waiting. It started with Doctor Go back in you know back in nineteen ninety eight when we were talking about him and you know and all this other stuff that's come down the pike. And every year I tell you, dude, don't wait for this shit. It may never happen. Or it may take another. Well, it, may, it may take another ten years. Figure out a way to live your fucking life. Figure well, it out. I've been, since, since I premiered on the show in 1998, nothing, nothing has come has really come about new on the market. That's a sad part. Well, that's not that's true. a sad reality. That's not the reality. That's your reality. The reality is, you know, uh, in ninety uh, December of ninety seven, Finasteride was approved. In two thousand, Dutasteride or two thousand two thousand one, Dutasteride was approved for benign prostate hyperplasia. We do know that what, whatever whatever you guys think about platelet rich plasma therapy, when it's done correctly, there are thousands of people that have contacted me well hundreds for sure that have said that it's worked and thousands that have contacted me who believe that they're getting some benefit from it especially women they're they're working on things you know but it, nothing's perfect listen believe me i don't want to paint my head i don't want to paint my head i don't want to have to wake up in the morning with this you know crazy you know head of hair with you know uh, basically I have to wash this stuff off of my head I have to wear a hat most of the time unless I take a shower. You know, I don't want to live. I don't want to deal with that. I want everything that you want, Joe. But I also figured out a way to live my life. Now, yes, I'm in a better position as far as my hair situation, not having surgery than you. But there are plenty of guys yeah, who've, sure. who've been through what you've been through who have figured it, figured it out, who've, fig who've been able to take off that hat, who've been able to find a way to figure it out, whether it's a hair system or whatever, and you just haven't been able to do that. And I want the—I don't want these young guys to sit, you know, and listen to the show for another fifteen years when I'm sixty-something years old. God forbid! You know, they don't say that. And, you know, but I'm saying putting their lives on hold. This is a support group. This is a place for you guys to learn and 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 to figure out a way to cope. It's not just about you know 
the, the, the next great treatment coming down the pike and hoping against hope that everything's going to be okay tomorrow. Because I can tell you, and I've said this every goddamn show, it is not. It is not. Tomorrow may never come for any of us. So figure, Oh, my God. So, so figure out a way to live your life. That's all I got to say. Oh, man. Oh, Phyllis, give me a, a bottle of something, please. Cyanide, man. Oh, God. But I'm sorry. It's just this is a very bumming me out, this show. Well, you know, what do you want me to do? I love you, Joe, but I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to give you a little bit of reality here. I try to do that all the time. You know, I've watched well, least, you. I've, no, listen, ahead, I've listened to you just basically wither away over the years. Well, Spence, at least to get more, some more donor area or if we know beard hair transplants work, that will be a major, major, major step. You know what I'm saying? If I yeah. knew beard hair transplants work, I, did, I would do it tomorrow. You yeah, know but, that? But beard hair transplants do work to some degree. I'm looking at my sound levels. They are so low in, in uh, this software. Um, let me, let me ask no, you. No, you're coming in very loud, Spence, to be honest with you. Let me ask you, Suncast, how is my sound on Skype? How's my sound coming through? How is my sound on Skype? <laughs> <laughs> sound is fine in Canada. Is you Joe, sound good in Canada, man. Is Joe, is Joe a lot louder than me, or are we about the same level? I had to switch mics on Skype, and it's just the whole thing's a mess, dude. I am going. I am. The fa I. I don't know if I could even forgive Andrew Zarian for making me get this new rig, because everything was fine before. Well, Spencer, you could stop appearing on his show if you want to punish him for one week. Suspend suspend your appearance on the show for one week. I'm not. I, I, I'm not going to punish him. So I'm. I'm going to try to come in a little louder here. Let me see if I could uh, up this a little bit. You more. sounded fine, man. You're coming really loud. I just put my computer on. You're coming perfectly. Yeah, but I mean, we're, our levels are supposed to be. You know, I'm supposed to be slightly louder or as loud as the caller. I'm definitely not coming in that loud. It's just uh, the whole thing is fucked. Well, up. Uh, my computer are coming in super loud, louder than ever. Oh, that's good. All right. So um, I give you a ten. Uh, I give you a ten uh, out of ten. One more thing before you get to the next caller: Have your staff or you conducted investigation as to whether Dr. Cole is going to meet with Dr. Nigram, or is that another rumor? Say that again. In English. Have you or your staff conducted an investigation into the f the rumor that Dr. Cole is going to meet with Dr. Nigram in Mumbai, India? Is that factual or is that more fiction? Uh, to my knowledge, there has been no meeting set, um, but I have invited Dr. Cole to, I mean, I've said this before, to uh, do a program with Dr. Negum, and I will moderate the program. Uh, Dr. Negum did write uh, the ball truth, and I actually just got that email today. Uh, it was forwarded uh, this morning, but I think he wrote maybe sometime last week. Uh, I'll have someone on my staff get you know get back to him and uh let him know that you know we definitely want to do this we want to conduct a moderated discussion on the air and hopefully he will be able to do it um you know i got a very interesting email through the ball truth from dr negum and you know i i don't know if there's a language barrier or there's some sort of a, a language gap or if he if he doesn't really understand what i do so I'm a little confused and a little concerned by uh, the email they sent me. I'm not going to get into specifics. But, you know, if Dr. Negum, if you're listening, or anyone who contacts Dr. Negum is, is, is listening, just he, he needs to know that the only reason I want to him to be, to be in contact with him at this point is to give him the opportunity to discuss what, you know, his claims are on the air. I have absolutely no interest, just to put this out there, no interest in going into business with Dr. Negum. I have no interest in uh, um, uh, promoting or, you know, getting involved in any type of a U.S. clinic or anything like that. I need to put that out there. That that It's not the reason why there would be any contact. So I, I'm just wondering, I don't know if it was if it's Dr. Negum's people or if it was Dr. Negum himself or, but there, there's some, I think there's some sort of a I think they may be thinking that maybe uh, you know if they're connected with me that we want to go that that, that that I'd be willing to go into business with them, and that is not that's not something that I'm interested in doing, 
and I'm trying to be very diplomatic when I say this, but you know, the email that I received was it was very interesting. That's all I can tell you, Joe. It was very interesting. It wasn't as straightforward as I thought that you know a, a physician would send me any, any. Most physicians who try to make contact with me, who want to be on the show, whatever it is, or they have their people contact me. It's very straightforward. We'd like to be on the program. We'd like to talk about this. Uh, but there's usually never any like kind of business discussed in the email. You know what I'm saying, Joe? Yeah, I definitely, um, I definitely understand. I understand what you're saying, but I, in your overall view, was it a positive email? Would you say it was very positive? Uh, my, my view is this. There's no doubt that Dr. Negum wants to um, uh, become a part somehow of the ball truth, uh, be a part, you know, be on the show, be interviewed by me, uh, get his name out there. There's no doubt in my mind. And so in, in that sense, I guess it's positive that he's interested in, in potentially being on the program. Um, you know, I, I honestly, dude, you know how I feel about this stuff. We allow the conversation to happen on Ball Truth Talk. We do. It's interesting stuff, you know, but it's a double-edged sword. My concern is there's a lot of people who are hoping against hope that, you know, this guy who basically came out of nowhere is all of a sudden doing something that no one else can do. Uh, this guy who has not really been in the hair restoration game all that long, surgical or otherwise, is all of a sudden capable of doubling hair and doing other things that he's claiming to do. You know, I hope that that's true. So we're going to allow this conversation to happen. But historically, and you know this, the physicians who have pandered to, to message forms over the last, you know, decade and a half have usually come up with nothing. And that's important that people know that. It doesn't mean that Dr. Negum is going to come up empty-handed. He may be onto something. I'm well that, aware of that. Sir. He may be onto something that I just have no clue about, and I'm hoping that that's true. But you guys need to be prepared. You guys need to be prepared. You know, pr online presentations, excited forum users, and 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 patients who are willing to discuss their trip to certain places and certain te you know clinics. I have seen that happen countless times over the years, countless times. And I can tell you that every single time, in the end, these users will disappear and the end result is zero, zilch, nada, nothing. Now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Dr. Negum proves history wrong. Or this, you know, he's able to do something that no one else has been able to do. That's why the discussion is allowed to happen. But I just want you young guys to be realistic. This may never happen. Go ahead. Well, Spencer, as you know, I've been with you 15 years, and unfortunately, we've seen nothing but disappointment. You're right about that. It's not even about disappointment. It's about, you know... I'm just way over a lot of these physicians and their claims. That's I, what I'm I've to. learned over the years, and I don't need to laugh, but, you know, scientists, men of science, don't pander in general and it, you know dr negan may be a man of science but generally they don't pander to young vulnerable consumers on message forms that's just not the way most science is conducted so you know maybe this is something new maybe this is something that you know this is going to be the new way that you know real scientists connect with you know, potential, uh, you know, people involved in trials and stuff like that. But I just say just be very careful. That's all I'm going to say. So, you're, so let me summarize. Your mind, you're not overly encouraged, but the jury is still out on Dr. Negro. Absolutely. The jury, the jury is still out, and he may come back with, you know, these patients may come back. We may be just floored with the results. I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm not going to hold my breath. And I think Dr. Negum can only respect me for what I'm saying right now because I do not want young, vulnerable guys to uh, go to India and be disappointed, even if it's free, you know? So, I don't know. I'm just... I'm gonna, Joe, I'm going to take another call, right? Uh, I, uh, okay. So I just want to thank you for doing me that favor. You know what I was talking about? Where now we're now with that me and a certain person are now in contact with you. Know what I'm talking about. I won't mention his name. All right. Yeah. All right. No problem. You got it, bro. I'll talk. I'll, I'll put you. Thank on you. Hold. 
Thank right. you, Spencer. And let me take some medication. Are you please keep me on on hold. Or I'll, I'll, keep you, I'll keep you on hold. You got it. I have to take my medication. Thank you, Spencer. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can. You're very low, but uh, all right. How you're very clearly on the computer, but you're a little low on the phone. Maybe it's just my phone. All right. How is that? Is that any better? Uh, a little bit, yeah. All right. So what's up, man? Who's this? Oh, this is Chris, uh, the one you got the refund oh, for. Oh, Chris, man. How are you? What's going on? Oh, uh, hey. How's it going, dude? Uh, hanging in there. How about yourself? Uh, you know what? I can't complain, bro. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to uh, continue the conversation we were having about uh, my reluctance and apprehension to start with an asteroid. Okay. Um, I uh, got... You know, the five MGs of Proskar back way back in October, and I just haven't been able to uh, bring myself to start taking them yet. Um, as I've expressed to you, uh, you know, I have many reasons for that. Um, and I think I was so scarred by the, the damaged um, hair, hair surgery that I had that if, you know, I have some side effects from the finasteride or if that fails for me too, then, you know, that will probably do uh, some irreversible damage, you know, emotionally. Uh, but, you know, I spent a lot of the last few months and even a few years doing a lot of research on it. I made a uh, a post on your forum a couple weeks ago um, it's entitled something similar to uh, Finn users, How Did You Get Over Your Fear? And I got a lot of, uh, got a lot of good re- responses to it. It was like close to 50 responses, I think. And uh, I had a lot of good uh, feedback from people who have taken it. But um, well, okay. So you had a lot of good feedback. So what? What? What is? What have you learned since since you started the thread? Well, you know, it's tough. It's it's tough because you know everybody reacts differently um, to it, and you know, my my strategy was kind of hope. You know, holding out hope that maybe you know something would come along. You know, uh, just kind of pushing it off as long as possible. But um, you know, I'm not really able to do that anymore. Um, you know, like I've expressed to you, I'm starting to uh, experience more thinning in the front, which I'm not sure if it's of my doing or if it's just regular genetics. Um, by my doing, I mean, you know, I've had my hair longer for a couple years now, and I usually wear it back when I'm out. Um, when I started doing that about two years ago, I didn't have to use any topic or any concealer of any kind. Uh, but the last year or so, I've had to cake the front of my hairline with it. So I'm not sure if it's some kind of, you know, trauma hair loss caused from that or if well, it's, let me ask you how how tight is your so you wear a ponytail you're telling me oh uh, yeah usually when it's back I, I don't really wear it tight you know and i don't wear it every day i mean it's not like tight to wear you know i mean it doesn't feel tight at all so i'm not sure if it's kind of sped up my you know i already have the hair loss in my genetics you know my uh uh my mother's father was completely bald on top and you know i was already experiencing the hair loss when i had the surgery back in 09 right which was on my hairline so I think maybe I just kind of sped it up a little bit. I'm not sure. Even even the few hairs that regrew from that seem to be starting to come out now. I've noticed. Um, so, well, listen. Th- this is this is the situation. You know, right now we know that uh, finasteride is really, really probably one of the only things that actually can stop the progression of your hair loss or slow it down. Right. Uh, you have Dutasteride, you have some experimental stuff, you have RU58841, you know, that people are talking about online. You know, people will do whatever they can to avoid using finasteride. I get it. Right. There's a lot of, lot, lot of scary stuff out there about it. Um, you know, you have to make that decision for yourself. But I, tell, I will tell you this. Unless you do something, you will go bald. So if you, can, if you can't deal with that, you have to make that decision. If you can deal yeah. with it, then I would say there's no reason to put any type of medication into your body, and it's probably a bad idea because, you know, I've been on this thing for almost 20 years. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I really don't. Right. I don't know if I'm going to get some bizarre form of cancer or if, you know, uh, my insides are rotting away. I don't think they are. I've, you know, I do get checkups, and I seem to be uh, very healthy for a man my age, and mm-hmm. knock on wood, and I've been able to save a lot of hair, and uh, I've had no adverse sexual side effects that I'm aware of. You know, if if my libido was lowered by this, then, you know, then I guess I would have had a crazy libido without it. 
That's all I'm saying. Because I have had, you know, a very normal sex life since I've been on this drug. So, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. For me, it's been a, a wonder drug. It changed my life. And then you're going to read about people who believe that their lives have been destroyed by it. So, you know, you have to figure that out. I know that in my particular world, the people that I know personally, and whether it's in the industry or just in my personal life, who have used this drug, they have all of them, all of these people that have contacted me, they've had absolutely no adverse side effects. Not a single yeah, person. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, um, that just brought a thought that I actually wanted to bring up to you that um, reminded me of, I, I caught your show uh, yesterday, the one that you did a couple weeks ago that was entitled um, The Future is Still the Future or something similar to that. Right. Uh, Finn was talked about a lot in it. And you said that you, uh, you know, for many years, I think you said, I don't remember how many years you said, close to 15 years maybe or over a decade at least, that uh, you never heard any anything of side effects at all. Then all of a sudden they just kind of appeared overnight. You know, and um, well, we heard about side effects, but we never heard about these long-term or permanent adverse sexual side effects that are being talked about. And that really didn't start until about 2005. All these RX checkers and all these sites where you see adverse side effects written about. If you go back in time and you look at the timeline, you know they didn't exist. And all of a sudden, when um, websites like Propecia Help you know, were, were put up, you know, it's possible that, you know, the guys at Propecia Help, all the guys who really are, you know, uh, you know, believe they, they're suffering or who are actually suffering, you know, maybe they went on to these other, uh, these sites and started to write about their experiences. And it just became a situation where it just snowballed. But until then, you didn't read about it, whether it was Alt Dot Bald Spot or the old school forums like Hair Loss Help that have been around forever and Hair Sight, which have been around since 1997. It did not exist, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, bam. So how is that, you know, how does that happen? You know, there were millions yeah. of guys taking Propecia, especially when it was approved in 97, 98. Everyone got on it. Where was all this, inf where was all this stuff? And I was involved in the online world. Where, you know, when was this happening? Who was it happening to? And why weren't they writing about it? Would you say right now that there's probably about, you know, like you just had a couple million guys on Propecia in some way or another? If you just had the kind of rough... I would say there, I would say that there's got to be at least a few million, a couple of million people who are on Finasteride in some form. Wow. Well, that's encouraging. Um, see, there was... A, I was actually really close to starting it a couple of weeks ago, you know, and I, I was doing some last-minute research, and I came across this study um, that was released, I think, in June of this year uh, by a doctor that said something about how... Um, finasteride can lower your your uh, willingness or wanting to drink or something like that. And then he also was saying that he was giving like a trial of like uh, guys finasteride who had no sexual side effects for like uh, for a certain period of time, a couple months. And then when they they all had side effects, and like when they've been off of it for three months, they uh, they all still have the persistent lasting side effects. Um, and also, I've uh, been dealing with some depression uh, the last couple months and. Uh, well, let me, let me tell you, first of all, let me tell you this. Uh, okay. There's no way that finasteride curbed my, you know, my drinking. So, you know, w may maybe if you are a severe alcoholic, but mm -hmm. I definitely still enjoy drinking. I have never, f I, d I definitely didn't feel like it, you know, maybe mm -hmm. because I was uh, a little happier with my hair and my life when I was mm -hmm. younger. I didn't drink as much after, after a year of being on finasteride. But uh, I don't know if that's even reasonable to, I mean, you have to understand that, you know, I don't think that people really understand how studies work and how easy it is to get something published. And, you know, you look at Erwig's study. You know, everyone is hanging their head on Erwig's study. And I was talking to somebody on the phone the other day, a really well-known person in this field, and he's an MD, PhD. And, you know, I, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but basically what Erwig did was a phone survey of guys who already reported adverse sexual side effects. And according to some information that I was uh, made privy to, and this stuff was taken down, there was a particular website that actually was giving guys instructions on how and what to say in order to get 
into the study things things like they've never been treated for psychological disorders they've never been wow. on antidepressants things like that that has since been taken down so i mean how skewed could this quote unquote study have been you know i mean yeah that's quite suspicious it's whatever it is you know to me it was a phone survey of guys who were suffering with adverse sexual side effects and long term side effects and depression from they believe using this drug. Now, do I believe that they are suffering? Absolutely. Do I believe there's a percentage of guys that are really physically dealing with this shit? A hundred percent. I really do believe that. I really, there ha it has to be true. It, there's no way that every single adverse side effect could be psychological. But I also believe that it's a very, very small percentage. But that's just my belief. I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. I'm not a scientist. I don't, you know, I'm not studying everybody. I'm not speaking to everybody who's dealing with this, you know. So, you know, I can't tell you to get on this drug. All I can tell you is my experience, the experience of thousands of people that have contacted us through the years uh, who have had positive experiences. And if you are really suffering with your hair loss, you have to weigh the, uh, you know, the pros and the cons. And what happens if you do have the adverse side effects? Will you be in worse shape than you are right now in your mind? And if that, if the case, if, if, if you answer yes to that, then maybe you shouldn't take finasteride. Yeah, I, uh, no, you know, I don't think I would fall into that. Even when I had the surgery in 09, um, you know, I wasn't on finasteride. Um, I, I did take it briefly in 06, the full 1MG, you know, brand name one, right. uh, for a couple months. Um, I don't remember ever having any problems. I, I, from what I recall, I just quit because uh, of the price. Um, I mean, you know what happened to me with the surgery, but right. other than the pains, you know, and the lack of regrowth, I mean, I did get lucky. I have a, you know, very small scar. I, I didn't have any, any shock loss. Um, I think maybe I've done more damage to myself with the way I've worn my hair the last few years. Uh, than the actual surgery did in that aspect. You know what? That, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't blame yourself because you just don't know. You don't know if that's the case or not. You don't know if yeah. it's just uh, genetics and it's just time for that hair right. to fall out. Well, my plan was after, you know, talking to you and, and Joe Tillman and that post that I made and all the research I've done, my, my plan was to do, uh, you know, the, the 0 0.25 MGs of the fin, you know, three times a week. Um, do you think... That, I mean, I know you're not a doctor, but do you think that doing such a low dose, you know, three times a week, or slowly building up to that, you know, starting off with one one pill once a week and then two and then three and staying on three, do you think that's, because I still have a good bit of hair. Like, if I wear my hair down and blow dry it, you know, I'm still in really good shape. Well, um, well, that, that's, that's uh, you know, you're in a great position. I'll, I'll tell you this. Yeah, I'm guy, very lucky for that, knock a, on wood. guy so. that made a post on Ball Truth Talk that actually called into the UK show. We'll be putting up that segment uh, in a few days. And he initially said that he thought he had sexual side effects from finasteride. Um, and he stopped using it, but then decided he really wanted to get back on it because he was, he was losing ground. He wanted to get back on it and he thought that, you know what, let me give it a shot. And he basically did something similar to what you're talking about. I forgot the exact dosage, but he started off very small. I think it was every other day, but, you know, don't uh, quote me on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to go back and listen. And uh, he called the program and basically just said, listen, you know what? In ret retrospect, he believes that the side effects were psychosomatic. And, you know, maybe just by weaning himself on it, he just made him feel better psychologically. And uh, he has no side effects now. And he's, he's up to, I think, a full milligram a day. Um, and he's doing well. He's so he's glad that he got back on it. So to answer your question, that may help you in several ways. You know, one is it could help you psychologically, knowing that you're weaning yourself on it, you're taking a smaller dose. But I also believe that, you know, there is some information out there uh, that... You know, there's a school of thought that, you know, even a half of a milligram can help with hair loss, half a milligram a day. So mm -hmm. I think by weaning yourself on it, I think that's a good way to do it. And eventually you can get up to one milligram a day. And uh, there's a good chance that you're not going to have any adverse side effects. And I think, you can, I think if, you're going, if you're the type of, 
if you're made up to benefit from the drug, if you are a guy that's a good responder, I believe you're going to respond to even a lower dosage. But if you're not a good responder, you're not going to respond to anything. Well, here's kind of a, a weird question. Okay, okay like I don't – it's weird because, like, I don't lose a lot of hair in the shower, really, or I don't, you know, like when I'm sleeping, like, you know, normal – happens with that that i've read over the years but you know like i said i'm still losing i have a you know thinning in the crown on the left side not on the right side it's kind of weird a little bit on the left side which i've had since like 07 has kind of just stayed in that one particular small circle you know knock on wood fortunately which i'm able to cover up you know with my hair and then the the receding hairline uh you know problem that i've had for a few years now um do you think uh, taking something like that because I, you know, I haven't been able to read your your book. Unfortunately, I just can't find it anywhere. It's out. Of, it's it's out of stock on Amazon. And you know, every time I try to to find it to buy it, um, I can't, I can't seem well, to get my hands the, on the it. Book but. is the last time it was uh, it was published was in two thousand. So right now, the second edition is thirteen years old. So uh-huh. uh, it may <laughs> they may not be keeping a lot of stock. I mean, I haven't. Uh, well, the, the, yeah, like. I wanted to read because I remember you mentioned on your show about how you were into you know you used, you used to at the time you wrote it that you were into you know the herbal supplements and stuff. Do you think I, I don't think that you're as into it from what I can tell from what you said as you were at that time? But do you think like a combination of something like that, you know, just a few different kinds like biotin, MSN, uh, maybe like green tree extract, that kind of thing, in, in uh, conjunction with the fin? Do you think maybe or would that be too dangerous to combine the two? Well, I, we do know that um, these herbal um, uh, uh, nutritional supplements do cause adverse sexual side effects. I mean, it's anecdotal because there's been no studies, but there are plenty of people that use these herbs that have the same side effects as finasteride. So doubling up and using finasteride and um, uh, saw palmetto, pygium africanium, or whatever could end up exacerbating any potential side effects. Now, back in the day, we didn't know this, so I didn't write about that. And I had taken both at one point. Now, luckily, I had no adverse side effects, but you know, I'm not a big believer in the herbal supplementation route anymore. And again, uh, the original book was written in 98 and researched uh, between 95 and 97. And uh, when I updated the second book, there really wasn't much more information that I was able to glean from uh, the herbal supplementation route. But mm-hmm. at this point, honestly, I, I don't believe in it. I really don't. And I've said that a million okay. times. I think it's, it, it's, you know, it, it could, you know, listen, if you, if you, if you, if you don't, don't do well on finasteride and they want to try something, okay, you know, maybe for some people it works. I know some guys who've called me who believe that it has helped them. But for the most part, there's no scientific evidence that it does help with hair loss. And, you know, um, over the years, most people that have tried this stuff just end up stopping because it's not doing anything for them. Really? Cause yeah. I've ta- yeah, okay. Because I've taken, you know, multivitamin for years. I've taken biotin. By the way, I'm looking at Amazon right now. They they claim that the book is in stock. Oh, really? Okay. It was just last week when I uh, checked. Oh, yeah. good. Okay, I'm going to have to well, go pick it's, up one. It's good, news. it's good news for me because they're still stocking <laughs> the book. 13, um, years, 13 years in print. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, one last thing, I kind of weaned off topic there where I was going. I was saying, uh, when you were mentioning the thing about being a good responder to Finn, I was saying that, like, um, you know, I don't really lose a lot of hair, but I still have some noticeable problems to me. Like, how can you tell, like, you know, if you're not, because Finn, you know, they say doesn't regrow hair. So if you're not losing a lot of hair to begin with, but you know that, you know, ver- visually losing a lot, like, how do you know if you're a good responder to it? Even well, if it's not starting to regrow your hair at all or Well, Finn, Finn, Finn can regrow hair. For sure, and you can kind of notice the reversal of the miniaturization process, in some to some degree, because I did. But basically, what you want to do is you want to take baseline pictures, video, uh-huh. and just s- somehow figure out a way to remember where you were when you started taking this drug. And then in a year, if you haven't gotten any worse, there's a good chance that Finn is working for you. Okay. Um- Say, like, you know, the problems I was having in my hairline from the way I've worn it late, the last few years is trauma-related. Um, do you think there's, and I, you know, would stop doing that, you think there's a way Finn could possibly re- rejuvenate those follicles, or? Well, it, it depends. If it is actually true traction alopecia that ends up being a scarring type of alopecia, then no. It, it can't, is there a way to tell, like, what kind you have? Uh, like, well, yeah, you can, you can actually go to a, a hair loss specialist and, or a dermatologist, and you can have a biopsy taken, and they can tell whether or not it's, uh, it's, it's scarring. But it's, 
it's unlikely, unless you wear your ponytail extremely tight, then it's unlikely that you're causing yourself uh, that type of hair loss. It really is. If it's a loose ponytail, you're not going to you're not going to be causing yourself traction alopecia. It probably okay. is just genetic. Okay. But again, I'm All not right. I'm not a doctor, man. Right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, listen. I, I just I know that you're kind of paralyzed right now. You don't know what to do, and you've been holding on to this mm-hmm. finasteride prescription or these five pills for a year. Um, right. You, you know. At some point, you're going to have to make a decision. It's either I'm going to move on with my life and figure out a way to live with this hair loss, or you're going to do something to try to, you know, try to stop it. That is, for most people, reasonable. Um, but I can't tell you what to do. I would hate to see you come back to this program and say, you know what, Spencer? I tried finasteride and I'm impotent. I don't want. I never want to get that phone call. So right. the bottom line is it's your choice. You need to kind of, you know, uh, weigh the situation in your life. And if you cannot even think about dealing with the fact of, you know, dealing with hair loss and you're willing to take a very small risk, then you know what to do. But mm-hmm. if you're not willing to take that risk, man, if you really are thinking about it a lot, then there's a good chance you're going to have the side effects. You know, they're okay. really, if you're thinking about it too much, you're going to have them, man. Okay. Yeah, and that's what everyone says. I know, Psych- yeah. psychological more than anything. I wish but I, 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 I wish I pictures. could. I w- you should send me pictures. But I wish I could just I say, w- "Hey, dude, listen. You take this shit. Nothing's going to happen to you. I can't tell you that." All right. I, can talk, I understand. All I can talk about is my experience and the fact that I've had mm-hmm. a wonderful experience on the drug, and I know so many people who have. And I really feel bad for the guys who are paralyzed, because in '98, '99, 2000, the guy, the young guys that got on this drug, for the most part are still walking around with better hair than they would have had if they didn't get on the drug. Now it's like everyone's so paralyzed that we're kind of back to pre-Propecia days where there was really nothing to help us. And that's, you know, I think that that's it's causing a lot of desperation. People are buying a lot of snake oils. There's a lot of talk about different products on Ball Truth Talk that, frankly, I would never try. Yeah. I, I, this will sound weird, but I, the side effects scare me. But I think the thing that scares me the most is the you know the lifelong commitment, unless something does come out, which is looking unlikely. But I think the you know the commitment of you know taking it and because I've read things of uh, you know people online saying that they take it and and then uh, their hair loss has gotten worse, like it's uh, accelerated their hair loss somehow. I don't see how that's possible, but I've read that a lot. Well, I, and, I, uh, I've read that too, and I do believe that in some cases it's possible. Now, Merck will say that that's not, and most doctors will say that's not the case, but at least anecdotally from the years that I've been involved, and I'm not talking about any fear-mongering, I have heard cases of guys who've taken the drug and whether they kind of uh, it pushed it pushed the hair into an antigen phase. I mean, into it into, into a telogen phase, and it became kind of like the synchronized shedding situation, or you know, whatever. There are guys out there who have taken the drug, and things have gotten worse. It usually will reverse itself, but you have to stay on it long enough to see that reversal. And most guys will quit out of sheer panic, and I get that. So that's a possibility too. You could get worse. Just like if you start Rogaine tomorrow, there's a good chance that you're going to go through a shed and you could look a lot worse before you get better. That's always a possibility. So that's another thing you have to factor into the equation. Okay. Well, got some decisions to make. I'll get those pictures out to you in a couple of days, but uh, you know, thanks for taking my, my call. It was great talking to you again. All right, dude. Listen, I wish that I could help you more. I know it's a tough decision, but... Mm-hmm. You know, man. Oh, you've been a ton of help to me over the last couple of years, Spencer. You know that. So well, I greatly appreciate your advice. All right, man. Well, listen, I appreciate that, and good luck to you, all right? All right, thank you. All right, take Bye-bye. care. 888 I'm going to take a short break, but when we come back, I will be taking more calls. Uh, sorry if the microphone is low. I'm trying to speak more closely because I'm using a different mic setting because apparently there's no sound. Uh, But I think, obviously, the phones are working tonight, so at least we're able to do a show. Thank God. Uh, 888-659-3727. I'm Spencer Coburn. You are listening to and watching The Bald Truth. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
winner of seven prestigious Golden Forehead Awards. My family's always arguing. It always starts off innocent and then it gets vicious right away. So I was like, hey, looks like you're losing some hair. At least my wife's not a whore. Spencer David Coburn. Hey guys, welcome back. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. It is great to be back here live doing the ball truth. Um, you know we have some technical problems, but not as many as we had just uh, the last time. Um, so we'll see. My mic may be a little low. I'm going to see if I could actually uh, raise the threshold here and see if I can get a little bit. Uh, I don't know if that's even working, but um, Jesus, it's so screwed up. But um, you know. We're doing our best here at the Ball Truth, and it's uh, it's great to be here. Um, you know, I, I, you know, Joe called in. He uh, had some news about. He wanted to talk about Adirans, and uh, I, you know, let everybody know that I, I spoke with Dr. Ken Washenik about ARI and uh, the fact that Adirans has chosen to kind of like stop funding the project, and as devastating as that seems. I still believe that uh, you know they may may come up with an alternative way to fund this project. The science is there; they've done a decade of research. So believe me, there are companies and there are private investors that want to get their hands on this stuff. So, um, you know, logically speaking, I, I definitely see it moving forward. So I don't want people to think that this is it. It's, it's all over. Adirant's made a decision. You know, it was made by a board of directors who might not be quite as scientifically savvy as perhaps the last board. And their interest is in doing what they do best. And what they do best and what they've been proven to do well over the years is do like, you know, hair club type of, uh, you know, uh, retail businesses across Asia, from what I understand, and in Europe. Um, and, you know, they're the biggest sellers of wigs, I think, in the world. And they are also the parent company for Bosley, and now the Hair Club. So, this is what they do. That's their business. And this particular board decided that they were going to put their money elsewhere. I mean, they just spent $162 million, I think, on, on, on acquiring the hair club. So that's the way that it is, guys. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And I will tell you this. This is, I am not a, I'm not saying I told you so by any means because I didn't tell you so. But what I do say all the time is that you cannot put your eggs in, in any basket when it comes to this. This is our lives. You know, we can't depend on other people to make our lives better. You never know what happens in business. You never know what happens in life. You never know why certain decisions are made. You have to work within the parameters that we currently have to figure out a way to make your life better. You know, there are guys that have been on the, the message forums for years just saying, eh, you know what, Coburn just says that because he wants to continue to make a, a, a fortune in the world of hair transplants or whatever, you know, his hands are in. You know, honestly, guys, that couldn't be further from the truth. It's actually ludicrous. It's, if you think about it logically, it's ridiculous. The truth is the truth. Joe has said it for many years, you know. We've been doing this for a long time, and while I think we've made progress over the years, for sure. Surgical hair restoration is, a, is, a, is at a point now that, you know, I thought it was at a logical end point back in 1998, 99, when I started doing this. It has evolved tremendously, no matter what some people online might say who are not even in the field. 
Results are more consistent and better than ever. I mean, there's still a lot of fuck-ups. There's, no, there's no doubt about that, you know. And I don't mean to laugh when I think about it. It's kind of like you know, th this is not a, a field. Surgical hair restoration is not a field that is completely free of fuck-ups, even from some of the great guys. But for the most part, it is a, a it is a cosmetic surgery that has come a long way. So just the surgical option alone has evolved tremendously since I've been in this field. I believe that treatment options have evolved as well to a certain degree. And I believe we are a lot closer to finding better treatment options. But closer is just closer. It's not here. And you know, these guys who I see just spending hours and days and days battling it out in the message forums about stuff that they really don't even know about. Because I understand how desperate they are, but I mean, God, guys. You know, I wouldn't come out here every week to tell you what I'm telling you if, if I really believe something was going to come out tomorrow or in the next, in, in the next year or in the next five months. You know, my job is to report what's happening and to kind of give you guys the best guidance I can. But more importantly, I think what I try to do is give you guys some emotional support, a platform for you guys to kind of learn and to, to, to share with each other and to vent and to hopefully evolve, to hopefully learn to live a life before it's too late. I am 48 years old. I think about the time that I wasted, especially in my 20s. I was in a dark dark place, especially in my early 20s, because of my hair loss. Anxiety-ridden, depressed, just, just not living the life that I really should have lived. And you know what? Yes, I went out and I banged around and I, went, did, I did what a lot of young guys do. And I was lucky enough that I was, for whatever reason, I was able to kind of drum up the confidence to do that. But with that said, I was still fucked up inside. Just uncomfortable in my own skin. Did not feel that I looked the way that I once did. And I was losing my appearance, my looks, what I, what I, thought, I, I thought I was losing them at least, at a very early age. And it fucked me up. It fucked me up. You know, it made me feel less than. It made me feel when I was out in the bars and I was hanging out with, you know, 21-year-old girls and, you know, guys who had these completely awesome hairlines and full heads of hair that they can style the way that they wanted to style. And I was, I was like relegated to a specific style and trying to cover up my, my bald spot. I felt like, you know what? I'm the guy that has to try harder. I'm the guy that has to succeed, you know, and, and be better than the guy with the perfect hair who may look better than me at this point, who's able to wear a more stylish hairstyle and just feel, you know, be more youthful. But saying that, I did feel that way. I felt that I needed to succeed. I needed to, to, to I was driven to be successful. I was driven to, to do something with my life that I, I felt that, you know, other people just, you know, might not be able to do. So for me, the pain, while the pain was great, it also is, it's what drove me to, to be the person that I am today. Which is not such a bad thing. So when I, when I hear, that's my computer, that's so loud. So when I hear Joe and you know and, and I, I I hear the the pain that he's still going through and the fact that he needs to be medicated because of the news that I just gave him and the fact that he's fifty something years old and he's in his room and not enjoying his children, not not enjoying the life that he has. It's fucked up, man. I don't want to see anybody like that. Anybody. 
you know, there's a guy, and I, I think I may, I may have mentioned it on the air uh, at one point, but um, a really great person, a great hair transplant surgeon, and a guy that, um, you know, one of the few doctors, actually the only guy um, who was in the IHS that really took the time when my brother was killed, that really took the time to, to see how I was, not just, you know, send his condolences, but to, to call me month after month to see how my life was, to see how I was dealing with the loss of my brother. He was a guy who was very apolitical, a guy that never really went out there and battled it out with people you know, in the industry. Basically, this is a guy that came from hair transplant royalty, so to speak. His dad is Bobby Limmer, who is the... Um, the grandfather of follicular unit transplantation, the guy that changed it all, that made hair transplantation natural looking. And Brad Limmer, you know, decided to follow in his dad's footsteps and do what he did to help hair loss sufferers in, in his state of Texas. And he was a great doctor. For those of you who don't know, Brad Limmer died passed away in his sleep at the age of 47. Guy was in great shape. He was an athlete. Took terrific care of himself. And he went to sleep one day. He could, who knows, that the night he went to sleep he may have all kinds of worries about bills or life or whatever, like everyone else has. And he didn't wake up. And that could happen to any one of us, guys. Any one of us. At any age. He was my age. Dead. That's it. You know, they have the funeral, the obituary, everyone's sad, and then life goes on. And all the suffering that we deal with doesn't mean shit to anybody else. It only fucks us up. So, guys, we need, all of us need to come to terms with what we're dealing with. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Let's go to the phones. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hey, it's Dr. Andrew. Andrew, what's happening, man? How are you? What's going on, man? Nothing. Apparently, you know, my sound went off a couple of times. I switched mics on, on Skype, and now it's working. I don't know if this mic sounds good. It's the, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's not the mic that I usually use. You're uh, on the RE20, right? Well, I'm, it's, I'm using the RE20, but it's not the mic setting. It's the microphone 3IO2 in Skype. I had to change the setting, and now it works, but it's a weird... That's to, weird. To me, it sounds tinny. No, you sound fine to me. All right, good. So what's happening, man? How are you? Not much. I just came back from dinner. I heard Joe's upset, and he's giving up, and I'm a little uh, concerned for him. You know, J J honestly, I, Joe unfortunately gave up a long time ago. You know, anyone who's hanging their hats on any of these cures, to me, has given up. I've, I've said that since, since I started doing this. It's wonderful. I think that we're making so much progress. But, um, you know, at, listen, Adirans, if you didn't hear, Adirans is not funding uh, their ARI project, uh, basically their the hair neogenesis project uh, anymore. They're kind of pulling the plug on it, not because it's not working, just because they've made a... a, a a strategic decision to move in a different direction and um, you know there's rumors going around that this was happening because they were basically liquidating their their capital assets of their laboratory and um, I spoke to Dr. Ken Washenik last week and he told me that Adirans pulled the plug the good news is the good news is though that they are looking for outside funding so uh, with Ken's connections and the fact that the science has been proven to work to some degree, I don't see why that's not going to happen. Are you there? Is that why Joe's devastated? That's why, apparently, that's why Joe's devastating. But it's, it's devastating. It's not like it was going to happen tomorrow anyway for Joe. I feel bad for him. I was very concerned. I logged into the chat room. I saw him saying it was all over. He's giving up. And very devastating to hear that. Well, I hope that he doesn't give up, and I don't think that he will. I just think he, he's, going, he's going to be around for a, an, another show and another show and another show. But I, like I tell all these guys, man, you know, it, 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 they can't hang their hat on this. And I think Joe wants to talk to you, so let me, uh, let me pot him up. 
Hey, Joe. Hey, Andrew. Thank you for your condolences, man. I appreciate that. My condolences. I'm no. sorry you've given up. Well, Spectre, you know, I used to think the Japanese are very smart business people. Obviously, uh, I'm wrong. Look at David Picard of Allegan. He knows what a cure, what a, at least a viable treatment is worth. He's pouring billions into uh, Phase 2B of their improved Latisse product. Am I correct? He's doing TV bragging of how much money he's going to make off of this. I mean, these people from Adirond stupid, or is it me? Well, listen, the, the new board made the decision. I really believe that. I, I don't think they really, truly... I think the Japs are smart, really. I really don't think they understand what they may be giving up. Now, who knows if they're even going to give it up? They may not just be. They may just not be funding it for now. And then, you know, if they find that there's outside interest for funding, they may take that outside funding and let, let somebody else fund the company. I mean, obviously, obviously, Kenny and his staff did not make a good presentation to the Adirondack board, in my expert opinion. Well, I will, I, I, will, I, will, I will tell you that I think, unfortunately, Ken, while he was consulted, I don't think that he had as much to do with it as most people would think. I honestly think it was out of his hands. Uh, I don't think it was, um, they were really looking at the science of it. They were looking strictly at the current business aspect of the money going out without money coming in. Yes, but other rants has in their website they're releasing the product in early 2014. This is a fact they've stated. So I I don't I, well, maybe, I don't maybe, understand. Maybe maybe they're going to need to update their website. Maybe they don't want to make certain things public. I don't know what I don't know. Listen, I asked Ken exactly what I can say, what they what he felt comfortable with, and he said, "Look, whatever I'm telling you is the truth, and uh, I feel 100 percent comfortable with you t with you expressing." expressing it the way that I expressed it to you. And that's all I can say. He told me no more. I know nothing else than what I'm telling you guys. The only thing I know is that they are no longer funding the project. That is it. They are currently looking for, for you know, outside funding. And, you know, who knows? There may be an opportunity at some point for all of you guys to get involved. Well, you that's know, the point I'm trying to make. Like, I like a lot of hair stuff like myself are very wealthy. I mean, we'd be more than happy to donate several thousand dollars to cure this terrible disease. Dude, I can, I can, I, I can, mean, hair loss suffers is the most wealthy people in the world. I can tell you this: there's no doubt in my mind that I can get just through this our resources. A hundred thousand people, if they're willing to give, you know, uh, to make an investment of, you know, uh, you know, five hundred bucks uh, for either, you know, something in return or the ability to be first in line, whatever it is, they'll do it. You can start a Kickstarter. Yeah, it, absolutely. Absolutely. Spretz, you know how wealthy they am. I write a big check. You know that. What the hell's going on with these people? Are they insane or what? I can't answer that. I don't think they're insane. I just think that it's a decision that they made, Joe. What are you going to do? I mean, the, the, the plug gets pulled all the time on projects like these. You know what it is? You have a man as intelligent as David Vicard knows what a treatment of hell was is worth. He knows. That's why he's aggressively pursuing this. And yet the Japanese... Is, the Japs are supposed to be so smart, and yet they turn out to be but nothing but idiots. And I have to castigate them really, Spencer. Well, Joe, really. Uh, I mean, let, let, let's let's just you know take one step at a time. So now we know what the news is. It's this is the reality of the situation. Um, you know, who knows? Who knows if eventually there's going to be some sort of like like Andrew said, maybe there'll be some sort of a, a crowdfunding effort. Um, that would be that would be incredible, actually. Yeah, but a crowd, they, 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 people, uh, people on the farms have demanded that people fund histogen, fund reposol, but nothing ever came of that either. Forget about. I mean, for, 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 forget I'm about sorry. the few, forget about the few people on the forum who, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I I read that stuff. It's 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 amazing to me. It's always like you know, this has to be done, that has to be done, this has to be done, but no one does it themselves. No one starts the project. It's always like, well, you know what? Coburn should do this. Or somebody else should do this. But you, the guy, you personally couldn't do it. But, but, but the guys sitting behind the keyboards, they don't want to do shit. Why is that? I know, exactly, I know exactly what happens, Spencer, if you did it. I know what the allegations would be against you. We know that already, right or wrong? Well, first of all, I, wouldn't, I couldn't do it. How can I do it? I could 
you know, I had no problem if, there was, if the company wanted to start a Kickstarter or something similar and they wanted to, you know, let, uh, let the hair loss community know through my resources, that's great. Absolutely. But I'm not going to be in charge of this funding. You could be, because the trackers would be attacking you, making all kinds of allegations against you, right? True, true or false? Yeah, but, uh, no, I, I'm curious about that, actually, Spencer. If there was some sort of crowdfunding project on, like, Kickstarter or Indiegogo, I wonder how much money it would be able to raise, considering how many people suffer from hair loss. Well, I can tell you this, that I know that they would definitely be able to raise at least enough money for the next round uh, of, 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 um, of trials. So say, let's put a round figure out there of uh, $5 million. It shouldn't cost more than that, or ten, you know, $8 million. There's no doubt that that could be raised within probably a very short period of time, depending on how it's put out on social media. I know a couple of pretty well-known guys that would be, you know, that have really powerful websites, guys in the media, who would love to see this happen. And I can guarantee you that I can get them to put this out there. So I would say that it, it, it could take, you know, just a couple of weeks if it's done correctly, especially if, like, a guy like Ken Washana came out, put up a YouTube video, connected to the Kickstarter project, explained the science, let them know exactly, let, let the world know exactly what they're, they're, they're trying to attempt to do and where they have come so far as far as their research and done it in a really, you know, compelling, professional way get the right people behind them, I know that they can raise a lot of money. Spencer, there's 100 million hair stuff, approximately 100 million hair loss stuff for in this country alone. If each person gave $10, that's a billion dollars. Do you realize what I'm yeah. trying to say? How much money could be raised? I, I, I know that. I know you that. chicken feet. I know that, but I think uh, Follicly Challenge has a good point. You know, a lot of people are going to want some sort of a guarantee or a piece of the action, or some people are going to want to, they'll donate if they can be first in line to get this done. So, you know, what, what kind of, they would have to do a tremendous amount of volume to get the money that they need. How would they be able to say guarantee that people would be first in line or would get a percentage of, you know, of, of the company? It could be really difficult. You know, people would have to be a little altruistic to make this happen. They would have to be willing to... No, they'd pay for hope. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I'm saying. They'd have to basically just say, you know what, I'm going to give up this 100 bucks and trust this company and not expect anything financially or, you know, any type of special, uh, you know, um, uh, you know to, to, to be a person that may be first in line to get this done, special treatment, I can't even think tonight, uh, out of, the, out, out of uh, the donation. They would just have to, like you said donate in hopes that this comes to fruition a lot of people won't do that but i, I think a lot of people will well spencer yeah, would do you? a commercial for the what'd you say what, 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 what Andrew? would you would you donate knowing that there might be a chance yes and i would also promise to do a commercial for them if they made me one of their first patients but again you want something yeah but you might need of to course. donate you might need to donate ten thousand dollars to be the first patient $10,000 to the end, you don't know what they am. There's nothing. I, I think, you know, that, that's interesting. There, there could be different tiers. If you're willing to donate yeah, $10,000, no, that's, that's yeah, you will be first in line to get this done. That would be. You donate 100000 then you then, you know, you're in the first hundred. Right. Well, I know certain people who have. And if, you donate a million, if you donate a million bucks, you get it done in space. Yeah. Well, Spencer, I know certain people I have connections with would we would make that phone call for me. That would be a worry for me. Am I correct with that? on that? He's talking about me. I don't. Know, I can't say it live in the air. I said certain people I'm connected to. Well, I'm sure would make a phone call for me. Of course, I. Well, do. I'm first in line, Joe. So if there's any kind of uh, <laughs> issue, I think they need a lot worse than you, a lot more than you do, well, man. I don't. I don't man. agree with that. I don't agree with that. Well, exactly, uh, uh, you need to get done, Andrew. I'm curious. I'm curious if the guys in the chat room would, would I mean, and, and you guys should call in to talk about this. You know, it's hope for me. What would you do if 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 they started a Kickstarter project? If there was some sort of a crowdfunding project for this technology, if there was some sort of funding project, Spence, that said, okay, you do this. You know, let's let's say it's not an invasive surgery; it's, it's some sort of. Uh, injections. Cellular, cellular injections, uh, Andrew. Yeah, and they said, you know, with this, you're going to keep what you have and grow what you've lost. Or you're able to grow so back you know, 30% of what you've lost, but you keep what you have. I would do it, I would give ten, twenty thousand dollars 20000 instantly. 
Oh, it, I mean, but you would give that much money if you knew that you were like you had a place in line. Yeah, if I knew I had a place in line, yeah. Right. And I think well, a lot Andrew, of people, your, your, your special producer, I'm sure you have a place in line. What? Your Andrew, your your, your special producer, I'm sure you have a place in line. He's more than my producer. Oh, well, I would okay. hope so. Yeah, well, listen, I, I, you know, who knows? Who knows if at some point uh, Ken or you know, uh, other guys in the company are going to say, you know what, this is a good idea. Let, let's try to make this happen. And, you know, and my advice would be, you know, it's got, it's, obviously it's got to be done right. And, um, but this is a legitimate company. This is a company that's been around for a long time. There is a lot of science behind it. And the guys that are involved are legit guys. So, yes, there's a lot of snake girls out there. There's a lot of people who are, would be, uh, maybe look at a project like this with a John Desai initially until they've really done their research and realize, wait a second, this is for real, and we can we can be a part of this. Um, I absolutely I absolutely believe that the money would be raised actually far more than they need to move forward with this. But it really depends. All they need is to make get get on the stock exchange, make a public offering, and just let hair loss sufferers buy the stock. Well, That's the perfect solution. Yeah, but I think I also think the bottom line is it's it's in the end it's probably going to be up to Adirans because even if Adirans decides not to fund it, it doesn't mean that they're you know necessarily going to allow this to happen. They may just kind of step back and say, okay, well you know what we're going to get some maybe we'll get some funding elsewhere. We'll continue on. We'll you know we'll own the company and not fund it. Um, but you know they're they're still going to have maybe put certain parameters in place or limitations in place. Who knows? I don't know what the fuck's going to happen, dude. I really, I really don't know. I will tell you this: that you know, companies like Histogen and 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 uh, Replicel, um, you know, I mean, they're going to be looked at a little bit uh, more closely now. And I think that hopefully this puts a little fire under their ass. What do you mean by that, Spencer? Well, they're kind of like, okay, well, you know, maybe they're going to think, well, you know what, this competition is knocked out. Now we only have to compete with these other guys. Let's let's move. Let's get this done. Well, you forgot about Falco. You know they're not with the. They, I I, uh, didn't, I didn't forget. I just forgot to mention them. But yeah. You know, Spence. At they, times, they, I, I love the show, but at times it it almost sounds like Armageddon has happened, and every week you're just going on a walkie-talking, giving an update <laughs> that there's no update. <laughs> And nobody's coming to save us. That's exactly how I feel, dude. I've been doing this it's for like day four hundred and thirty-three. Hope. Hopeful that someone will find us. <laughs> no hope in you know sight. Same, I'm fucking Will Smith. Running low on rations. <laughs> but the same point is the wealthiest, the wealthiest man in the world, Carlos Slim, is a no at seven, untreatable no at seven, and he has billion, hundreds of billions of dollars. I mean, the richest, the boldest people, the richest people. This is what I can't fathom, Spencer. We we can cure this tomorrow. Well, you we didn't, have you the did, money. You know what, we have let, the let, power. Let me tell you this. This is what I've noticed yes, about, about a lot of people that suffer from hair loss. For a, There are the many that are affected, like you, and, and you know, even, even myself to an extent, when I'm losing my hair, I'm, I'm freaking out. But there are others that are not even aware that it's a problem. They become a full-blown Norwood 6 or 7, and, and they, it just never hit them that they've lost their hair. And when they're made aware really? of it, that's when everything changes for them. How could you be not aware of, of the fact that you're no at six and no at seven? Are you going to be blind? The people, the they block it out? No, it, it's multiple things. I mean, to some, it hasn't been. I mean, I'm sure subconsciously it, they're always affected by it, but for others, it's never been even like a like a public thing. Like they didn't know that there was anything they could do. They didn't know that there was any kind of support group out there. And, they and, just said, "Well, I've lost my hair, and this is what yeah, it is." This is and part this of my life. life. This is my part of my and life. I'll, it, I'll it give sucks. you a perfect example. Okay, perfect example about how somebody has lived their life. One of my neighbors. He's he's a young guy, 24 years old, and as soon as I saw him, I mean, he, he's he's like a Norwood four now. And he's lost significant hair. But he's a good-looking kid, but a lot of hair loss. So I was talking to his father, and we started talking about, uh, you know, hair loss, and we started talking about, you know, what I do. And he knew Spencer. He knew the show, and he knew the book, because he's a total, he's a football Norwood also. So we started talking, and his mother started asking me questions about hair loss. And he came over one day, and he started asking, he's like, do you mind if I ask you some questions? He's like, I didn't even know that the show existed. I didn't know there was a book. 
I didn't know that there are these treatments. What could I do? And now the poor kid, is it, like the floodgate is open. Pandora's box is open, and he's deeply affected by his hair loss. And prior to this, he never, ever made it public. And I think that's interesting that his dad, who knew about the book and everything, decided not to tell him because he probably figured, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get him involved in this cult. What because, am I gonna do, this be, poor kid? Yeah, because it could fuck him up. And I, I appreciate that. I think that was a smart move for this guy. So yeah, Joe. I mean, I, believe me, there are plenty of guys. I was not one of them. That's why I do what I do. But there are guys out there, and guys that I see. I mean, guys in my neighborhood, my neighbors, guys that I know. They're like, you know, they, they know what I do, and they, they don't like the fact that they've lost their hair, but they've you know married hot women. They've become successful in life. And you know what? Yeah, a couple of them aren't that great looking. They probably were much better looking with, with their hair. But they still figured it out. They fig And I also know guys who wear pieces. And there's one guy who's one of the most highly functioning guys I've ever met. Total success. Multi-millionaire at a young age. With his piece, he married like this total knockout. Like unbelievable looking woman. And he's just like, you know what? This is it. I, this is, I wear a piece. You know, what is he going to do? That's what he decides to do. That's what he decides okay, to do. If you, if you have hundreds of millions of dollars, you could, you could also get a brand new piece every single day for the rest of your life, and nobody would know. But he did this. He, he was wearing it before he made his money. That's the thing. He decided, you know what? I'm gonna, I want to look good. I feel good, you know, with hair on my head. And, you know, he does look good. I think you really have to know what you're looking for to see that this guy is wearing something. So, you know, it, it, he is one of the guys that just kind of moved on and did his thing. Guys, we have some phone calls. I don't know if anybody who wants to hold on, but um, I'm I'm, gonna, I'll drop. I'll leave. Andrew, man, listen, great call. Thanks a lot. Let me hold on. I, go, I, just wanna, yeah. I just want to tell, tell all the sufferers that it's not the hair that you have on your head. It's the hair that you have on your heart. <laughs> right. That's I'll talk, true, thank you. I'll, I'll talk to you later. That's a lie. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hey, Spencer. This is Vic from D.C. Hey, Vic, man. Long time. How's everything? Uh, good, man. I, I'm just happy that uh, uh, the show's on tonight. It's, uh, it's, it's This is like, this is the best show on earth. So, you know what I'm saying? And this is, uh, it's a real treat when, when it comes on. Well, you know what? That's great. I appreciate you saying that. I, I really do. So, how, how have you been? What's going on? I'm doing pretty good, and I um, uh, just called up to, uh, I guess, try to, uh, I wanted to see if I could, like, talk to Joe, just trying to cheer him up, because, uh, you know, my hair loss situation is way worse than his, and uh, you really? helped me come to terms, you come, you uh you helped me come to terms with it, now I'm living my life because of you, so I just wanted to talk to Joe, and uh, uh, and you know, hey Joe, are you on the air? Am I fired up, Spencer? Yeah. Oh, hey, hey Vic, Joe. I really appreciate that. I'm in a very, very upset mood tonight, but it's devastating. I had a rant. So, well, as you as you know, Joe, I mean, uh, I lost uh, pretty much all my hair, but it, because of watching the show that. I've uh, been able to move on without doing a single thing. So I just wanted to talk to you, and uh, I know you're in your 50s now, and yes, uh, and you've lived a little bit more than half your life, and I just really hope that for the remainder of your life you can live a very good one. And maybe in order to do that, um, certain steps need to be taken so that you can free yourself from from hair loss occupying your mind a lot so Please i just wanted to know what did huh? you say joe joe say that again Please describe some of the steps that could be on mind <laughs> Jesus. let me let me Vic, you know i'm going to tell you you're going to try and you and i appreciate the fact that you're trying but you can never get through this guy when it comes to this you cannot get through the joe I have tried for almost 15 years. I really have. And, you know, I want you to try to describe some steps to him. Maybe, maybe you can get through to him. I don't know. Give it a shot. Well, well Joe, the thing is that I was, um, like Spencer says, we all have 
you know, from Staten Island in us. Your your personality is there's a huge element of you in all of us who suffer. Um, has my suffering gone down permanently? Away gone? No. I think suffering's reduced by ninety percent because of me watching the show, because of me talking to Spencer. Out of all the sufferers in this world, your relationship with Spencer has been the longest. And what I just want to say to you is that you've, uh, you have a limited amount of time in this body on this earth. And I think that it's high time for you to really live the best time of your life now, if you can. I just wanted to ask you this. What? What if one day you woke up with a full head of hair? Would that make you completely happy? As in, nothing else would bother you. I just want to know that. Yes. I immediately divorced my wife, go, go back to work, walk in, be able to leave my bed. I'd be able to walk on the beach. I'd be able to hear the, <laughs> the birds sing. I'd be able to walk among the flowers, Vic. I'm sorry, man. No, I understand your pain. Now, let me give you this hypothetical situation. What if Spencer and Andrew Zarian, without you ever knowing, came into your house, tranquilized you without you knowing, and then got a professional hairpiece sewed onto you? You know none of this. You were tranquilized out. They, put a, they gave a tranquilizer to your wife. She put it in your drink. You're out. They come into your house. They get the best hairpiece on earth, the best uh, uh, barber, so then you have no idea. Next morning you wake up with the full head of hair, uh, the best hairpiece on earth. You don't even know that it's a hairpiece. What would you do then? And, and let's say you had no idea that this was happening. What would happen? Well, obviously I'd be very happy for a few days until I realized when I tried the shampoo, that it was a hairpiece. Okay, let's say... But, but I would not remember, prosecute Andrew or, or Spencer because they are my friends. No, but in this, in this case, you have no idea that they came and they helped you out by putting a hairpiece. You wake up and you, you literally think some miracle happened and you have full head of hair. Would you really take the steps to make sure you had the best possible life for the remainder of your life? Yes, I'd have a whole new life. I'd be able to travel. I would take a cruise. I, I'd have a beautiful young girl. So why would it matter if it's, if it's growing out of your head or if it's glued onto your head at this stage in your life? Why would that matter? Because when the girl I was with, or whomever I was with, pulled it, pulled it off, they should eventually find out. But you're, only, you're almost sick. How old are you now? What, how old are you? 55. You're 55. Five years old. There is no shame in wearing hair at fifty-five. Anyone you, you could explain to anyone. You know what? I had some hair loss. I didn't. I didn't like the way I looked anymore. I decided to fix it. Especially if it looks good and they have no idea visually what it is, they are not going to give a fuck. You got a couple of bucks in your pocket and you look good, and you're fifty-five years old. They're going to be like, "Good for you. These are fake. I got fake tits." Or a fake nose, or a fake chin, or fake teeth. They will not care. I'm talking about my wife. It's, <laughs> it's a little different when you're 23 and having to put on a hairpiece. But when you're 55 years old, I am telling you, Joe, that there's not a woman, especially a contemporary, but even who's over 35 years old, that is really going to give a shit if you look good. If you look like a fool, that's a different story. But if you look good... They're going to be like, wait a second, this guy looks good. I would never know it's a hairpiece. They're not probably not going to go around telling people. And if they do, people are going to be like, wow, he looks great. And that's it. You can live your life. You can go out to the store and to the movies and, you know, walk in Central Park and do your thing. And the world won't know. I mean, if that's a possibility, why wouldn't you do that? Because I think, I think wearing a hairpiece is kind of odd. And here we go, Vic. That's that's the fucking story. That's just the Don't story. Get mad at me, Spencer. Well, Joe, that's Joe. Listen, all I wanted to do was uh, was get a chance to uh, to say this to you, because because Spencer cured me simply by talking to me. Spencer he cured, cured me simply by health? talking to me. Well, he cured my emotional state of mind. 
simply by talking to me. And you, out of all the sufferers in this world, have talked to him, have known him much longer than any of us. So I just wanted to leave you with those few words. Spencer cured me simply by talking to me, and you've known him longer than any of us. So I, yes. I, I just going to leave you with two words. With one sentence, I hope that rest of your life you can really live your life. Just enjoy your life. Do whatever you can. Spencer's right. Do whatever you can to enjoy your life. You have the world's best hair loss advocate right next to you who supports you and is willing to do anything to make you happy. My best friend. Well, not, not, not anything. Not anything, Vic. Not, okay, okay. Let me take that back. <laughs> to... to, to, to Go well, far any, 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 anything hair related I'll do for anything them. hair related yeah. go to far lengths to make you happy that, that's a blessing Joe I really hope that you get to have a great remainder of your life whether it be 30 years 40 years however long God keeps you here I just hope you can live it truly it's about it's about time it's 50, you're, you're in your 50s it's about time that you get to live for yourself have a great life let Spencer help you he He's been put on earth to help hair loss sufferers, and you've known him for longer than any of us. Any of us. Let him help yeah, you. He's my best I'm, friend. He's, he's going to help you. So, uh, Joe, I can just got to... Can I ask you a quick question, Vic? Yes, of course. Special, give me just another minute. Uh, how are you able to live your life, Vic? As a hell, your how am I able sufferer? to live my are life? You, are, you, are you able to work? Are you able to leave your home? I'm... I'm I'm able to work. I'm able to uh, go grocery shopping. I'm able to have conversations. Really? And you, know, I, the reason is, is before, before that, I used to lock myself up in my room and do this and that. But one conversation with Spencer finally hit me one day, and it just may put everything into perspective. And wow. he he said he said you don't need medication. He said you don't need transplants. He said you don't need any of this. He said, you just have to learn to find a way to self-equip yourself. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Joe, you have the power inside of you. God doesn't make anyone different. I mean, we're I'm different. I'm an atheist, but in, by the way, for the record. Okay. Let's say you don't believe in God. Every human has a certain potential. Not anymore. Okay. Vic, I mean, not Vic. Um, Joe, I honestly believe you're equal to each and every one of us. You're no different. You may have a different perspective, but, but you have the same ability as each and every one of us to be able to have a good life. So I know you can do it, and let Spencer help you. You have the world's greatest hair loss advocate right next to you. That's all I want to say, okay? Let well, Spencer thank help you. Vic. you. Vic, that listen. was really okay. beautiful, and I'm really touched. I really think that it's so beautiful that the next Spencer should put a, a special thing on the ball of truth about which is all the stuff you just said because you're really a, a caring, kind, hand loss sufferer. And I really appreciate you, Vic. You're a good well, you're a good boy. We 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 all love you, Joe. We all love you. Hey, I appreciate Vic. that. Hey, Vic, Spencer listen. Is my best friend. Listen, Vic. He's you, trying. You gave a you tried out me fifteen years. And Vic, Vic is trying to, and you know, Vic, man, you did a great job tonight. I appreciate the fact that you, you called and you wanted to help Joe out, and I'm so glad that we've been able to help you the way that we have. Uh, this because I remember when you first started to call in, and you definitely seemed a little desperate, and you were willing to do anything. When you know, I personally believe that it would have been a mistake in, in your particular situation, and I'm glad yes, that you've moved yeah. on, dude. I'm so happy for you. I, I really am. Oh, thank you very much, Spencer. All right, Vic. Listen, man, thanks for the call. And uh, we will, uh, we're not going to be live next week, but I think I'll be live the week after next. Thank you so much, Spencer. Right, you man. both Ta have a great night. All right, take that, care. Thank you so much, Vic. Spencer, one quick thing. Yeah. If you try to have Raddy Skype it, maybe he could help me out. <laughs> Raddy can call the local uh, UK line. He's in Europe, right? Yes, uh, yeah, he's from Europe. Right? He's a very intelligent hell of a sufferer, and maybe he could help me out, you know? <laughs> Boston wants to know this is Oprah. What? Dude, I'm, I'm the Oprah of hair loss. Come on. 
That was beautiful. Yeah, you should be on TV, Spence. That, that Vic is, what he said was beautiful, man. I mean, people, it's, you know, but, you know I'm going through a lot of times with Devin's Adirondack's news. I'm going to have to email a certain someone about this right up and get off the air. You know what I'm talking about, Spencer, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm sure he'll be devastated when he gets this news. I'll have to get to well, well, look, you know, Vic is a, a smart, mature guy for his age. I think he's like 26 or something. And, or 27, he's relatively young, and and he was a guy that really I, I didn't believe was a candidate for surgery, and he was trying to figure out a way to have surgery. And what I love about Vic is, and that shows how reasonable and how rational so many people can be when it comes to hair loss. He chose not to do anything. He would have gone to an IHS surgeon, you know, uh, I could have said, hey, go to this guy or go to that guy, but that's not what this show's about. And I will never, ever sell surgery to anybody. And that is, you know, it's important that people know that I believe that surgery is a last resort. And I was able to convince Vic of that, thank God. And he just said, fuck it. You know what? Coburn's right. I can live my life. And you know what? I, you know, it's easier said than done. You know, I was not equipped to deal with it. And if I was as, as bald as Vic was at his age, I would have figured something out. You know, I probably would have glued on a piece, you know, right away. I would have done something. But I do believe I would have figured something out. I do not believe that I would have just allowed my life to be destroyed by this. I don't believe that, Joe. And, you know, I'm, I have no problem admitting that I paint my head. I have no problem admitting that... Uh, there have been times when I've, you know, I've ordered partial hair systems and I've glued that shit on and I've walked around with it. And honestly, I got to tell you, it's, it's great. It really is. It, it actually is kind of uh, liberating. But, you know, for me, painting is a little bit, you know, easier than having to maintain that shit. So I decided to paint my bald spot instead. But that could be temporary. You know, I could say I can, I can come on the air in a couple of weeks and say, hey, check this out. You know, just pull that shit off. Who knows? I don't care about that. You know, I don't mind letting the world know that I will do what it takes to make myself feel good or look good and do what I need to do to just have an enjoyable life. Vic found his path. And I think that's incredible. And I'm really proud of Vic. We just want you to find your path. Well, let me show something quickly, Spencer. And I, I just want a quick question. I've gotten a lot worse since I retired. You know, you knew me back in the 90s when I was working. I wasn't really that bad. Right. Since I retired, I've gotten progressively worse. Yes. I, I think you know that. Uh, yes, absolutely. You know, it, it, there, there's something to be said about an idle mind, Joe. And when I was a cop uh, working, I wasn't as bad as I, uh, as I am today. And and that's why you know it'd be great if you can figure out something to do in your life, something that is keeps you away. Maybe volunteer, help people. Well, I'm the sidekick to the bold truth. Well, besides that, but help people who are less fortunate than you, Joe. I try to do it every week. Besides on, on the hair loss thing, why, why don't you just, you know, there, there's kids, you know, there's this 13-year-old kid today that uh, developed a really huge YouTube following. She was a cancer patient. I don't know if she had lymphoma. I forgot what it was. She died today. And this is a girl that gave inspiration and hope to so many people. And she, she would go on YouTube and she would talk about her life and talk about her treatment and talk about girly stuff and whatever. I didn't really know much about her. I just I learned about her today. She died today, and this little 13-year-old kid, this cancer patient, this person who just didn't survive it, she gave so much to the world, and she didn't even have a chance to live. And she would go on camera with her little bald head and not give a shit. Not give a shit. And she gave so much to so many people, and unfortunately she died. You're alive. You're around, dude. You have the opportunity yeah, to do so much. Show. Say it again. Yeah, that's, that's a fortunate. That's just fortunate too, because you know, uh, you know, I'm just waiting. You know, maybe I'll check you out one night on my sleep. I don't know. That's how I feel right now. I was sorry to hear about Bobby Limmer. I had no idea. But he, he I mean, it's not Bobby you know, Limmer. Bra that. Brad Limmer, his son. Bobby Limmer is alive. Brad oh, Limmer, Brad, I, let him rest in peace. He died, and you know, I didn't I'm want to make sorry. I didn't want to make a out of respect for the family. I didn't really know how to react. I, I, you know, obviously I sent them something and um, just did everything privately. Uh, I decided that it wasn't something to announce on a message form. It wasn't something to announce on 
you know, anywhere publicly because I just, out of respect for the limmers, I just didn't think it was my place. But it's been a few weeks, and I thought I would talk about that because this is a guy that, you know, he's a wonderful guy. He really was. You know, there's not a lot of guys in this industry that I can say that I really think are wonderful people and have a lot of respect for. He was one of them. One of the few. Well, he just recently died? He died a few, about a month ago, I think, a month and a half ago. Oh, I didn't know that. And um, he just uh, went to sleep, did not wake up. I don't know what the reality of the situation, you know, th from what I understand, it's just, you know, natural causes. Boom. He's out. Lights out. Cardiac arrest, probably. Whatever. But this is a guy, young guy, 47 years old, same age, in great shape. I mean, in this guy took great care of his body. You never... Like you Like you, <laughs> yeah. But you never know, dude. You never know. You know, I'm just... You know, but Spencer, I have no fear of dying. None at all. You know the way lifestyle I live. I lead drugs, booze, meat every day. I have no fear of dying. None at all. Well, but you, you seem to have a fear of living. That, that, that you, you know, you're a brilliant man, Spencer. You've hit the, you've hit the, you've hit the nail right on the head. Yes. I know you have to go now. I do have to go. One quick thing. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Are you still, still, I'm a little confused about one thing. Are you still doing a UK show? I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, all the, the, all, all, all the UK shows are being recorded now um, because I can't, oh, I, I can't commit to being here on a Sunday. So we're recording uh, full broadcast and also segments. And I put up a couple of segments the other day. We have a full broadcast I'll be putting up uh, shortly. So uh, to answer your question, yes, we are doing a show that's catered to the UK. But we haven't been live in a couple of weeks. All right, I don't have to go. I just hope you. I hope your father is doing better. And please, in regards to your wife, blank. And I just hope your father is doing better. I know it's tough on you right now, man. Well, You're a good son, Spencer. I appreciate it, Joe. Guys, thank you, Joe. Let me let me say good night to you. Thanks a lot for hanging out. Thank just... you, man. God bless you, Spencer. All right, feel better, dude. All even right? though even though I don't believe in him, but this is an expression. <laughs> I know, I know. All right, guys, let me uh, let me close up shop. TheBallTruth.com, obviously, for archives of The Ball Truth radio show and, obviously, internet broadcast. You can check out archive broadcasts of this very program and the UK show. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for making us one of the most watched uh, and listened to internet broadcasts in the world, which is it's amazing to me that this little ball show has come so far over the years. But uh, I want to thank all of my... My listeners, my fans, and my detractors who listen to the show for making it what it is today. Uh, also, check out Ball Truth Talk message forums. If guys, if you want to interact with each other, uh, vent, learn about what's happening in the world of hair loss, check out BallTruthTalk.com. Uh, also, uh, it's important to, that I let everyone know. Just be careful. You know, take everything that you read on message forums with a grain of salt. Um, really do your research before you make any decision to uh, have surgery or to buy any product or service. If you want basic information, you want to learn more about hair loss, you have someone who is dealing with hair loss in your family, check out the American Hair Loss Association at AmericanHairLoss.org. Until next time, I want all of you to be strong. God bless. And honestly, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for any inconvenience you may have been put to prior to the program. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you could now leave by the exits at the rear, that would be splendid. Thank you. Good night.